In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Master Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. This is the second episode of a program entitled The Superiority of the Quran. And this program has three objectives. The first one is to strive to make the word of Allah supreme by delivering the message contained in the last revelation of Allah God to people the Quran. To. That's the first objective. The second objective is to show the best method of presenting the message of the Quran to people in this day and age. And the third objective is to illustrate how to practically implement the knowledge of Allah God in the Quran in our everyday life. Now, let me talk some more about the best way of presenting the message of Islam in this day and age. Now, from the Quran we learn that the message of Allah to people is constant throughout the ages. But what changes is the method of delivery. So in the Quran, Allah tells us about Prophet Moses upon him when Allah sent him to Pharaoh. So the message is the same, but the method of delivery is that Allah gave Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, signs which has a link to the, the main theme of the people of that age. So the people of Pharaoh were so much involved in magic. So the signs that Allah gave Prophet Moses were something related to magic but far superior to it. To establish a common bridge between the one who delivers the message and the one receiving the message. Now the methodology continues with Prophet Jesus peace upon him. When he appeared in Palestine, people were so much involved in medicine and healing so, so many illnesses with herbal remedies. So Allah gave Prophet Jesus peace upon him signs which were related to that theme but far superior to it like healing the leopard and the blind and bringing the dead back to life with the permission of Allah God Almighty. So I think you now you got the uh, way of Allah in changing the mechanism or the way of delivery according to the main theme of the people of that age to establish a common bridge in order that people will be more um, responsive to the message. Now, the question in this day and age, we have the message of Allah, which is the Quran. So what's the common bridge? How? To, what is the sign that should be used to show people the message of the Quran? Now, in order to know this, we just need to know the main theme of the people of this age. And without any doubt, this main theme is knowledge. People in this day and age, they want to know. The, for example, in engineering, in space sciences, in computer, in electronics, the people they want to know, they want to understand. So the main theme of the people of this age is knowledge. So the sign that should accompany the Quran is something in that theme but far superior to it. So, and how to show this is that in this program, in each episode, I choose a problem that people with all of their knowledge, they fail to resolve, they fail to find a solution for. And I will show how the Quran, how the knowledge of Allah in the Quran solves this problem in a matter of minutes, which is something linked to the main theme of the people of this age, but far superior to it. So as you can see on the screen, every episode will be divided into three parts. The first part is presenting a current problem in the knowledge of people, which people fail to find a solution for. The second part is showing the Quranic solution to the problem. The third part is illustrating how the Quranic solution can be implemented practically. So this episode shows the superiority of the Quran in the field of civil engineering. And the problem I chose is earthquake resistant structures. So let's see the current problem that people that engineers failed to resolve or to find a solution for in civil engineering. It is the problem of not finding a good design for a structure that can withstand earthquakes. So as you can see on the screen, when an earthquake strikes a certain region with all the design of people for structures, the damage is 
extensive. So engineers, they are trying to find a good uh, design for a structure that it would, would withstand earthquakes. And till this day, engineers fail to do so. They are, there are some solutions or some kind of efforts in this, like the ones you see on the screen, like structural reinforcements using extra cement or steel, uh, thicker walls, or using X-shaped frames to support the structure. But with all of these attempted solutions, there is no adequate design for an earthquake-resistant structure. So this is a big problem in civil engineering. And as I said, till this day, 2010, there is no solution for this. So let me just summarize the problems with the suggested solutions. The first is increased self-loading on the structure. Let me explain this. Now, people try to make this structure stronger by using thicker walls, more cement, more steel. Now, this creates another problem. Is that when the, and this problem is that the weight of the structure becomes so high, so much, that it loads itself. This is something, something called self-loading. The heavier the structure, it puts stress on itself before any kind of uh, external force, like the one produced from earthquakes, strikes the building. So this is a problem of self-loading. The structure can put so much stress on itself. The other kind of problem is that high construction cost. Because you are using supports and structural reinforcements, then the cost of construction increases. That's a problem. Not everybody has this kind of high cost to reinforce a structure that much. Also, high consumption, consumption of earth resources. That's a big problem as well. And at the end, the bottom line is that unreliable structural design. With all the um, knowledge of people, they failed to find an adequate design that would withstand earthquakes. So in the second part of this episode, we'll see how we can find the solution from the Quran by learning from the knowledge of Allah, God Almighty, in the Quran to solve this problem in a matter of minutes. So let's go to the second part. So in this second part, let's see the Quranic solution for the problem of not finding an adequate design for an earthquake resistant structure. And if we go to the Quran and ponder upon the verses, we find the answer by in one verse, only one verse in the Quran by pondering upon it, we find the solution for this problem. So we'll see that the strength of the Qur'an is in, pon is in pondering upon the verses, not just me merely reciting it. And the solution can be found in chapter 16 of the Qur'an, verse 68, which reads, And your Lord inspired the bees, saying, Take your habitations in the mountains and in the trees, and in what they erect. So here Allah in the Qur'an draws our attention to the bees and their habitation to the beehive. So we need to go and ponder upon the beehive, the habitation of bees. And if we do that, as you can see on the screen, we see that the beehive, it clings to a tree, in some cases, and if we ponder upon it, we see that there are hundreds of bees buzzing around the hive, and yet it doesn't fracture. So that gives you an idea of the strength of that structure. Hundreds of bees clinging to a tree and yet it's stable, it doesn't fracture. So it's a strong structure. Secondly, it is stiff. There is no excessive displacement in the, in the hive. Also, it's lightweight. It's clinging to a tree, uh, the hundreds of bees buzzing around the hive and yet it's stable and it's lightweight. And Fourthly, that you can just imagine the amount of vibration produced by the flapping of the wings of hundreds of bees around the hive. And if you look at these vibrations, it's far more than any earthquake known to man. And yet, the structure remains stable. So you have a strong, stiff, lightweight, and earthquake-resistant structure all in one. So this is the optimal design for a structure problem solved. That is the solution. Ponder upon how Allah, God Almighty, created the beehive, the habitation of bees, 
and learn from that engineering concepts that can be applied into structures made by man, you'll get the best earthquake resistant structure. That's the solution, finished, in a matter of minutes, even seconds. Okay, if you go a step further, and now we study how Allah created this stiff, strong, lightweight, and vibration resistant structure. We see that if you want to understand any structure, you need to go to the basic unit, the basic structure unit. And in the habitation of bees, as you can see on the right, the basic structural unit is the hexagonal cell. That the walls that Allah inspired the bees to build the hive, this cell, by having six walls, and you can see the link between the different kind of members in the um, habitation of bees. So this is the basic structure unit. This is the secret behind the behind having um, a structure which is light, strong, and stiff, and earthquake resistant. This uh, unit you see on the right. So if we now we need to now to do some structural analysis on this unit to understand it more. And as you can see on the screen, I just did some simple calculations here. The basic link in a hexagonal cell is the one you see on the screen. Three uh, walls uh, having an angle of 120 degrees between them. So in order to analyze the stability of this link, I assigned a point O, which is the link between the three members, this is the most critical point, and I calculated the summation of forces acting on this point. So if we take the x direction, the summation of forces will be E0. So you have F minus F cosine 60 multiplied by 2, so the solution will be, the answer will be 0. So the summation of forces in the x direction is equal to 0 at point O. And that starts to give you an indication why the structure is so stable. The summation of the forces is equal to 0. So there's no excessive displacements in the structure. Also, when you take the summation of forces in the y direction, you see it's equal to zero as well. So this gives you again some understanding about why it is so stable. And appreciate this more if we compare this to the link we make today in our homes. In our homes we make a 90 degree angle between the walls. Like the room you are sitting in now, look at the walls, you find them 90 degrees, not 120 as the beehives. If we do the same analysis on this link at point O, you see that the difference, one of the differences is that summation of force in the X is not equal to zero, it's equal to force F. So if you have a large force, like the one producing from earthquakes, that will make a large displacement, a large bending in the um, structural elements, and that would make a big problem with the structure. And that gives you some indication why so many of our structures, they crumble when you have an earthquake. Right? So, we are starting now to see the problem. As you can see on the screen, the current design of buildings is that we have this 90 degree angle between the walls, which is not good. But comparing that to the, the Quranic design for an earthquake resistant structure, the one you see on the right, we need to make the angle 120 degrees. This is just one aspect of the differences between how Allah created the beehive and how we, based on, depending on our intelligence, we make our structures. I just want to see the effect of this angle, the change in the angle from 90 to 120 degrees, what impact will it will have on the structural integrity of the building. So as you can see on the screen, this is the proposed design for an earthquake resistant structure from the guides of the Quran. So in the third part, we want to see how to implement this in practice. And you will see the superiority of this design compared to what people build today. So let's go to the third part. So now we'll go to the third part of how to apply this Quranic knowledge in practice. Now the kind of obvious way to do this is to build this hexagonal building and test it in practice. And in order to do this, I first made computer modeling and simulation. I made a model in the computer using finite element analysis, which is a very dependable and very accurate 
method of computer simulation. So I build the model in the computer, then apply the forces and test it and compare it to the way we build structures today. Let's see what I did with the help of Allah God Almighty. So I started with looking at the current design for buildings and this 90 degree angle between the walls and comparing that to the 120 degrees angle that we find in the beehive, which is really the secret, one of the secrets why the hexagonal design is so strong and lightweight at the same time. So in the computer, I made two models, the ones you see on the screen. The one on the right is the Quranic design for an earthquake resistant structure having angles of 120 degrees. And the one on the left is the way we build our buildings today having 90 degrees angles between the walls. And as you can see on the screen uh, as well, is that the basic kind of link in the hexagonal cell is the one you see on the right and the basic link in the square arrangement in the current design of buildings is the one you see on the left so this I made in the computer then in order to test them I applied a compressive force as you can see on the screen of a magnitude of 10,000 Newton which is a large force on both designs having the same material properties, just the angle is different. And the computer can calculate the, the overall displacements in the structure, how much it will move based on this force, like the one produced from earthquakes, lateral forces. This is the fair set of results from the computer. As you can see on the right is the displacement value in the Quranic design, the one based on the 120 degrees, the hexagonal cells. And the one on the left is the one produced from the 90 degrees, the one how we build our structures today. And you can see a huge decrease in the overall displacement values in the Quranic design. And this means that you have a, v a very strong and stable structure, 91% decrease in overall displacement. So in the Quranic design, when you have this hexagonal link and you apply a lateral force like the one produced from earthquakes, the hexagonal cell remains so much, so stable and the proof of this is the very low displacement values means it will not shake that much and that will reduce the stresses within the structure and make it more stable and more earthquake resistant compared to how we build our buildings with the 90 degree angle another set of results is I looked at the stress within the structure and the stress is very important the stress is like the concentration of the force, it's the force over the area. So the higher the stress that you have in a structure, the more probable that it will fracture if it exceeds a certain stress within the structure, like a sigma ultimate or the ultimate stress. So again, repeating the same kind of exercise, but here the computer, I asked it for the stresses. As you can see on the screen as well, the Quranic design shown on the right has a decrease of 41.5% in overall stress values. So this means that the Quranic design under the same loading conditions has lower stresses within it. And that's something very favorable and this is something excellent in structural design. You need a design with lower stresses such that it will not exceed its ultimate stress. So you can see the superiority of the knowledge of the Quran in all aspects here. The last exercise is that I build the, the complete unit shown on the right and the complete unit of how we build our buildings today on the left and applied both applied a compressive loading to both of 10,000 pascals which is a large pressure and again the computer gave me 26.3 percent decrease in overall stress values in the Quranic design so this gives you that the design you see on the screen is far superior in all aspects to the one to the how we build our structures today and that's a solution from the Quran for the problem of having an adequate design for an earthquake resistant structure so brothers and sisters we show I showed today with the help of Allah the superiority of knowledge of Allah in a certain field in civil engineering and the next step here is after this computer modeling and simulation is to build the structure to build it in physically and to test it so we can make a model home based on this hexagonal design and test it that's the next step Allah God willing so again each episode you will see 
a problem in the certain branch of knowledge of people and how the knowledge of Allah and the Quran solved this in a matter of minutes. And to know more details about this topic, please visit my website at www.quran-medical.com and you can email me at zquran at gmail.com and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.